Every year from March through September, European racers compete in the motocross world championships in nations all over the world. From January through September, American racers compete in the AMA Supercross and Motocross Championships in the United States. The only time of the year that American and European racers will face each other on the same track is at the Motocross of Nations in October. The thing that really sets it apart from other events is the riders and the teams are, are riding for their country. That element of patriotism that elevates the event and everybody loves to run their nation's colors. Motocross of Nations is a fight between countries. I have been for 25 years heavily involved with Team Belgium. Now, because of Jeffrey and Glenn, I'm 66%, let's say, coach of Team Holland. And I can feel these guys, that some weeks already, they're talking about their race. Un peu les JO de, du motocross, avec notre, notre, pour notre drapeau, on a les vêtements différents. Ça donne une énergie, le casque, bleu, blanc, rouge, on ne s'en la, lassera jamais. Being able to represent your country is a huge honor. It's one of the most nervous moments I've ever had sitting on the line. I mean, it's the only time I felt like I could I could throw up right now. And it's not only the fight between the countries, but there's of course always that annual fight between Europe and the US. In 2018, the Motocross of Nations was set to take place on American soil for the first time in seven years. In Buchanan, Michigan, Redbud has hosted a race on the 4th of July weekend for decades and is among the most beloved motocross tracks in the country, presenting the perfect opportunity for the U.S. to end their six-year losing streak at the Motocross of Nations. I'm just about as American as it gets. I love the USA. No money at this race whatsoever, just pride, and I want to bring home that trophy, and this is my fourth go. I really feel like we have a solid team. It's feeling good here at Redbud. American soil, this would be a great place to bring it home. Also with back-to-back -back U.S. motocross champion Eli Tomac, set to face MXGP champion Jeffrey Hurlings, the 2018 Motocross of Nations was one of the most anticipated races in years. I'm pretty sure Tomac wants to beat me. I want to beat him, and if I can beat him there at his home turf in a straight battle, then we can possibly say I'm the fastest rider on the planet at the moment. If he beats me, he can, he can say it. You know, for sure it's a special one. You can feel it. We have a team that is on paper. We have a real chance. They're talking about being sold out. I have never seen an outdoor race sold out, but that would be cool. Hard rain started around 4.45 a.m. Very hard rain at 5.30 a.m. Rain at 6 a.m. It's gonna be a mutter. It's gonna be challenging. This track changed more like to us a European track, you know, this with one, the changes yeah. that they made. And that doesn't benefit us. We raced in the U.S., but the track was a long way from what Redbud is in under normal outdoor conditions. And I think the riders were shocked when they saw all the changes, you know. There is likely no one who has invested as much time and effort in Team USA's performance at the Motocross of Nations than Roger DeCoster. Feels better. DeCosta has managed Team USA 33 times since 1981, winning 20 Chamberlain trophies for America. It's like us against the rest of the world, basically, the feeling. The European nations, they're happy to help each other to beat the US. But that's the same position a champion is in. If you have been dominating, all the other guys want to beat you. Besides Hurlings and Tomac on 450cc machines, the first race at the Motocross of Nations also includes riders on 250cc bikes in the MX2 category. The most anticipated battle in this class was freshly crowned MX2 world champion Jorge Prado, facing 2018 American Outdoor National Champion Aaron Plessinger. Waking up that day, I thought, we were gonna win. I had all the confidence in the world. We we're gonna rip up on him. Getting on the starting line, I even wore a American flag on my back. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Red Bull, Michigan! Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. Into that first turn, they go. Hurlings has got to fly down the inside. Hurlings is sampling the Red Bull soil. Front runner goes down. Jorge Frano leads now, the young Spaniard, the new MX2 world champion. Something is wrong with Plessinger, he's dropping. 
Plessinger back in 21. I don't know what it was. It just wasn't going my way at all. While Jorge Prado led half of race one and eventually finished third, Aaron Plessinger crashed twice, was forced to stop for new goggles, and eventually finished 18th. It was a dismal start for the American campaign. If I'm top three and, and my goggles come off, I'm finishing the race. If I'm back in the pack just getting roosted in dangerous situations because my goggles are off, I'm pulling in, no, no doubt. If one little rock were to hit the center of your eye, you're done. In the muddy conditions at Redbud, several riders were forced to discard their goggles, and Team Netherlands suffered perhaps the most severe consequences, as their MX2 racer, Calvin Valandrin, was hit with a rock in his eye and told by doctors he could no longer compete. All hearts cheering for the Netherlands turned to Hurling's teammate, Glenn Koldenhoff. Glenn is not the big star that Tony or Jeffrey is, but Glenn is the hardworking type of guy, and I think Glenn made the right choice by joining Red Bull KTM Factory, because the last couple of years he could develop in the shadow from Tony and Jeffrey and learn from them. And now maybe it's time for him to harvest, let's say, and really go for it. In 2018, Koldenhoff had one of his most consistent seasons racing the World Championships but still has not reached the podium at a single race all season. Every time I'm behind that gate, I want to have that podium. That's something I work so hard for, and I still believe I can make the podium, and I, I still go every time into a race with, with that feeling, with that confidence. I will keep fighting. I will keep fighting, yeah. Based on combined scores from the first two races of the day, Team France was leading, and hoping to win their fifth straight motocross of nations victory. As racers prepared for the third and final moto, Team Italy had an outside chance at the victory as well, and was hoping to give nine-time world champion Antonio Caroli one of the last major achievements missing from his trophy case. Countries like uh, USA or France, they have three all good riders, you know, top riders. In Italy, I, everybody have to relay on me. So maybe I never will have the chance to win the, the Nations, which is a big thing. I think you, you're going to be stronger the, the, the next motor than in the first motor. Because now you have this pressure off you, you know. Try to ride free, just like nothing to lose, kind of. I really have a hard time with giving up at any point as a racer or as a team manager, I always keep hoping. It's a team race. If you're worried about beating Jeffrey, that's not the most important thing here. We're here to win as a team. Things are very tense down here. We've got the Italians, we've got the Dutch, and of course, Team USA. This is the decider, everybody. Now's the time if you've ever done it before. Get those American flags in the air. The Americans must do well here in the final moto. Glenn Kolbenoff has taken over the number one spot here. The Netherlands are galloping and trying to take the Chamberlain Cup. Lapino into the number two, pulling into the number three. Here comes Caroli. Caroli now moves into the number six ride. Hurlings is back into the number 10. Where are the Americans? Barsha in 13. Eli Tomac at 28 position. We've got our work cut out for us, America. From the shadows of the Notre Dame Gold Dome comes our leader. Koldenhoff is about to be the overall champion here at Motocross of Nations, but the Italians and the French are nip and tuck here. In race three at Redbud, Antonio Caroli battled up from outside the top five and passed Team France's Gautier Paulin in third place, giving Team Italy a one-point advantage. But after taking roost from behind his teammate, Alessandro Lupino, he was forced to ditch his goggles and try to finish without them. Antonio Caroli goggle is. Caroli now back to sixth. Caroli comes through pit lane. I don't read Italian, but it pretty much says you have to pass Paul in. There's Paul Ann going past Lupino. So all of a sudden, Paul Ann is now up in the third. Hurlings running to the number two position. The Netherlands are amazing. They are amazing. Koldenhoff and Hurlings dominated their races, with Glenn taking a pair of wins and Jeffrey a first and second. It was enough to give Team Netherlands a third place overall finish. 
Gautier Paulin's late moto charge took France to their fifth straight victory, while Caroli's 22-minute ride without goggles proved to be two points short of the win. On one side, we are very happy because we finished second, which would never happened before for us, for me and for Lupino. But on the other hand, we are a little bit uh, not happy because we had the chance to win. Yes, we did it again, strong in America. Yes! <laughs> to see Glenn go 1-1, that's we could have only dreamt of. We talked the other day about Glenn just missing out on the podium in, in, in the GPs, but this is not just a cherry on a cake, this is a whole tree of cherries and, and, and even a whole bottle of whipped cream as well. We did show uh, we are faster than Americans. I think they hopefully uh, stopped talking about it. Finally, you know, we uh, smashed them this weekend. Finishing third, the Netherlands, the Italians were your runner-up, and the Chamberlain Cup champions, Team France, for the fifth time in a row. What do you think? We're getting a riding school here, so yeah. you should pay attention. I think we were expecting something different in the track. Why would you do that to an already perfect track? I don't know why you would change it for the biggest race of the year. Are the Europeans better than the Americans at motocross? Right now, yeah. I had a lot of people that, big fans of the sport, that came to me after the race and said, oh man, better, better luck next year. It was not luck. You know, we were not good enough. I'm not blaming the riders either because their responsibility is to try to win the Supercross. That's number one. Then number two is to try to win the Nationals. With a sixth place overall finish at the Motocross of Nations, Team USA's result at Redbud was a major disappointment for American motocross fans and a testament to the high level of racing that exists in the MXGP World Championships. The Motocross of Nations is set to be held at Assen next year, a premier sand track in the Netherlands. With elite sand riders like Hurlings, Caroli, Koldenhoff and Prado, it seems the Chamberlain Trophy will be in Europe for years to come. The only thing you know we can do is see if there is three riders that are willing to commit three, four weeks of time of practicing only on sand and teams that are willing to, to support that kind of effort. That's the only way I think we have a chance to not look silly.